Yeah. Hello guys, we are here with the Erasmus in Amsterdam. Yeah. Hi guys. Hi. Hello. Hello, nice to see you. The last time you talk, I, we talked, you hadn't yet won UMK. Did you expect to win? It was really tough. I, I have to say that we really, we really had to fight hard for the for the number one. It was really uh, a challenge because there were so many good acts and uh, they were really popular in Finland mm -hmm. too. So, uh, but and the moment when they were counting the points, it was like nerve wracking. And at that point, I kind of like almost lost all hope. I was so nervous, even though I had the feeling we can win. But still, when you see those points and are like, oh, oh my God, what's going to happen? Yeah. Yeah, but I can tell like two seconds before the guy told that we we got the most of the points. I say to Lauri. We won this. <laughs> I, I, I really felt it like yeah. I was so, you know, like yeah. biting my nails. And then I, I just felt it was all clear that we, we won. It was kind of a, like a holy moment for me. Nice. Like you really wanted it by the sound of this. Nice. And uh, let's talk about the visuals of the UMK performance. Where did, did the idea of the cartoon come from? And it's you, no? Is it representing you? That's what the rumors say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think Jezebel, the character, can represent anyone. But in those like animated characters, the cartoons, I, I think it had <laughs> quite quite much much influence from my myself. Yeah. <laughs> and why the yellow and the black? How comes this color choice? We wanted to. We actually the whole story went like this: that we did a lyric video before we did the animation and stuff. And the idea for the lyric video, I think Lauri mentioned earlier that like, oh, we want a yellow room and a black room and only yellow instruments and black instruments. And then you kind of start to shake them up and, and uh, then everything kind of re evolved from there. But because we are friends already, yeah. I will tell you a secret. Okay. Don't tell anybody. I won't. The show Pinky in Turin. Promise. Yes, good. The show in Turin will be all new. All it will new. be brand new, totally different. Okay, that's a little tip for you, but but anyway. Balloons! Oh my God, you're going to be in a halo balloon. <laughs> I, I can't tell. I can't confirm. But, but what anyway, anyway, we will change it all. Everything will be changed. Okay. But okay. don't tell anybody, okay? I will only not say, tell anybody. Any other secret you want uh, nobody to know? I have only secrets. Just ask me. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, in the video uh, of the last interview, there was a lot of comments about you and Boo, because you joined the band later on. People want to know how this happened. How did you end up being in the Rasmus? Well, the guys called me last, I, I think it was September, and uh, asked me to uh, like play a few songs with them in the rehearsal place. And, and it was obviously a crazy moment for me, because I didn't expect that phone call to happen but at the same time it felt really natural because we have kind of the same background with these guys and and grew up in the same area and and like the same kind of music so so when we got together and played some music it like clicked immediately and yeah. here we are now I, I kind of feel like I I'm I have been in this band for much longer than I really have Fantastic. And is this experience like preparing to go on tour or is this a complete new experience for you guys? Uh, it's different than being on tour. It's like uh, we're not alone here. Like there's so many other acts. It was like just having breakfast at the hotel. Like, hi, hi, hi. I'm meeting all these people. It's like all these energies and all different vibes and, you know, all different cultures. And there's so much to experience and learn from these other participants. It's, it's a wonderful thing. Yeah, and it's kind of ner exciting. Like we're a little bit nervous in a. You're nervous. And challenging yeah. also. Yeah, it's like, it's I mean, we what, know, we know what we do when we yeah. get on stage, but all this other stuff we do is like, yeah. what? What is this? How am I supposed to? What, what? You know, like, kind of feeling like, do I belong here? I guess so. And like, like a normal show is like 90 minutes or something. Now we have to pack everything in three minutes. So yeah. it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's kind of. There is a pressure. Oh, wow. Oh, I would have never expected this from the Rasmus, but um, you're human too. We've been practicing almost 30 years, only for this event. Yes. 30 years for three minutes. That's a very good quota. But is Desmond Child following your journey? 
to Eurovision. Yes, yes, yes. I just came from Nashville three days ago, and uh, I'm going back uh, in two weeks. So I'm, I'm, I'm in contact with him, uh, writing new songs for the album, and we're working on the, the future of the Rasmus. Meanwhile, we're doing all these things. So he's really loving this, and he's one of the greatest songwriters. And uh, also, he's a great... Um, personality it's really I'm really honored to know him and learn from him and I, I tell him like he's kind of my my mentor and life coach as well he's taught me so many things and it's wonderful to have this like uh, old wisdom yeah guys I know you have a lot of people to talk to so I'm gonna leave it here thank you it was a pleasure thank you, thank you. and see you around, see you around. Bye.